All right, in this video, we're gonna cover how to twitch jigs for salmon. We're gonna talk spinner techniques, trip planning for salmon and steelhead, where on the river to find these critters. Just keep watching. Me and my friends went on the Chehalis on a jet boat trip and got it done fishing for these late fall coho. All right, so we caught a lot of fish, but I'm here to tell you and explain kind of the methodology behind uh, how we caught the fish, uh, how you can repeat that for your own uh, do-it-yourself trip for coho. We're about to go into winter steelhead season, sh uh, Chinook, it's all the same uh, mindset and thinking when it comes to setting up a successful trip. They're way bigger up there in Alaska. Yep. I'm not taking a hand off. What? Give it to the old yeah, man. I'm an Alaska fishing guy. I don't hand off or not. Just fall yeah. right out. That's that's yeah, it sucks. Fishing is really important. Super slack line bite twice. He he was he didn't hook up the first time yeah. slack line bit it and he did the second <coughs> Yeah, mine didn't bite super hard either. Another half one. Nice. Right. Look at that, look at that. In Alaska, even the trees have salmon. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> That's great. I love it. Barely in there. That one wrapped about six wraps around that, yeah. that twig and that dog would Well, we can break it and always go back, back and get it. We know where it is. Oh, oh what is that? Oh. Damn, like the whole pile in the freaking what kind of the hole. Oh, God, damn. Damn. Oh, I'm gonna, I'll take a freaking. Uh, Who's freaking Alaska guy? Oh, no. <laughs> And someone's line is in my way where I want to cast it. Jeez. The whole hole. Man. All right, you got to put up with some of the uh, shenanigans here because this was fun. We were giving Connor a hard time. Yeah. He's a really good fisherman, a uh, guide up in Alaska, but we, we had so much fun just, just busting his chops, giving him a hard time as he kept he kept snagging up uh, constantly and was having trouble hooking that first fish with the with the spinner. But once we got him on twitching jigs, uh, he, he was absolutely tearing it up. And maybe, maybe he's just a better, uh, you know, Jig twitcher than uh, than spinner fisherman. Who knows, right? I mean, do they do they use do they use spinners up in Alaska? Is that is that a thing? Come on, Glenn. Nice. Good job, Paul. <coughs> oh yeah. Look at that chrome bite. Right. <laughs> nice, got him. I'm out of there. The problem with Coho though, by the time you get the rod, the bug is already at Yep. Still hat. <laughs> so first of all, you gotta know where in the run are you, right? In, in this case, it's November, and we're chasing coho, which means we're we're near the end of a majority of the push of coho that are coming in these rivers. So if we were to fish down on the lower end of the river, that would probably be a mistake. And so we were we were further up river, and we were targeting uh, both hatchery and wild fish. The regs allowed us to keep one of each. But uh, we, it's important to know if you're gonna target hatchery fish, you wanna know that there's a hatchery upstream of where you're fishing. And if, it, if there is one upstream, you can look at these escapement reports, which we've on um, pnwbestlife.com, we've got these nifty graphs that show you the rate of arrival of these fish to the hatchery. So you could see from this one that uh, all, some of the, a lot of these hatchery fish are bound for the Skookumchuck hatchery, which is an upper trip on the Chehalis. And you know, there's a few hundred fish a week 
coming through here, which gives us not a ton of fish to fish on. They're gonna be spread out, but it's enough uh, to get it done and, and, and have some decent fishing, which which we caught major, you know, for the most part, we got most of our fish were hatchery fish. You know, another, another thing is is when when it's late and the water's colder, a lot of times you're not gonna be able to find these fish by uh, just looking for rollers, you know, coho are notorious for being in the frog water, rolling all the time, you know, and, and making it known where they are. But in colder water, they don't roll as much. So you got to be able to read water. You got to know where they are. You got to look for the, the softer current edges, the frog water, you know, the, the slack water, uh, the water near structure. You know, we get we gave Connor, Mr. Alaska, a hard time because he kept he kept uh, snagging up, uh, you know, jigs and spinners. But part of it is he's casting into where these prime holding waters. Are, which means you're gonna lose some gear and that's part that's just part of the part of the deal so you're not losing gear you're not fishing right you know when it comes to, to what you're using uh, you know in colder water you, you generally want to go bigger <coughs> you want to go bigger spinners those size five size six blades you want to go brighter colors when it comes to twitching jigs you know you're trying to get their attention they're they're they have less activity in colder water this is true for for salmon and steelhead right so uh, compare this to say the cowlitz where the water's dam controlled it that that water temp stays more constant year-round and there's a lot of pressure on the, on those fish you know boats going back jet boats going over them constantly you got to use smaller stuff uh, when you fish the cowlitz and they're they're not as good of biters for a lot of that that same reason so it's really important also to have the right technique you know with the spinners we're trying to we're trying to move those spinners just enough to get that blade spinning and and no faster right you want to you want to feel that that blade spin on the tip of your rod and have a sensitive enough rod to, to, to so that you can really t tell that the spinner blades working you reel too fast and you're not fishing as effectively as you could be uh, when it comes to twitching your jigs you know I got a link to the uh, a video I put together on how to twitch jigs but the downstroke is more important than the upstroke it's important that that there's slack in the line as you see uh, with Connor's twitching motion here or, or what I did to hook my fish on a twitching jig is you're, you're, you're creating slack in the line with that downstroke and that's what allows the jig to dive and that creates the action that coho like and triggers strike. So if you're still out there looking for Chehalis uh, Trib or Grace Harbor area rivers for the late coho, you can get it done with these same approaches, these same techniques, but you can also take these lessons and apply it to the winter steelhead season, whatever we're gonna get up here in Washington or maybe down in Oregon and uh, look at your look at your rivers. Look at your 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 water temps and your where your hatcheries are, where your dams are, and plan accordingly. Right? Look at how many fish are arriving back at the hatchery, and you could turn that into a successful trip. All right. Finally, shout out to uh, Carrie Hoffman, Best Seattle Fishing, uh, taking us out, having a great time on his uh, on his sled there on the Chehalis. That was an absolute blast. Definitely one of the guides uh, that I'm going to fish with again. I fished with a lot of guides over the last 15 years. Uh, and, and definitely uh, Kerry Hoffman's on my short list of, um, of awesome guides to have, have a trip with. I also, uh, I just got this in the mail today. This is the uh, p and Best Life uh, hoodie here, uh, forest green. I'm kind of gauging demand for that if you want uh, one of these. I still got a price, good price from the printer, but um, probably gonna be around $50, somewhere in that range. Um, uh, drop a comment, uh, email me at uh, kylepnwbestlife.com and we will make it happen.